All right, today I'm going to cover something that uh, a lot of people aren't huge fans of, and that's literal equations and formulas. Now, literal equations aren't difficult. The problem is most of the time when you see them, you've just started working in equations and you finally figured out how they work. You're getting the x to be 5 or whatever it's supposed to be. Things are going great, and then they throw this at you. Um, the reality is it's not that hard to do as long as you kind of follow the bouncing ball. A literal equation in general is an equation with two or more variables. Pretty common one would be uh, when we graph slope intercept, you have this scenario. So when it graphs, it may look like that. The reality is uh, it shows that there's some relationship. If I change the x value, it'll change the y. So uh, if I want to know where the intercept is, I may need to look at the b value and whatnot. But literal equations is essentially analyzing uh, one equation based on the value of a different variable. So let's just do a couple and get that part of it over with. Uh, the type of questions you probably will start out with in sections like this would be solve 4x plus 2y equals 8 when x is equal to negative 5, 2, and 6. Now they nicely give you uh, values for x, so that means for each value they give you it's a different answer. So there should be three answers to this question. Um, but the reality is, in order to solve it, you need to get the variable that you're not given by itself first. So what I'm going to do is take this 4x plus 2y equals 8 and turn it into something that says y equals, because that's the one I'm not given. So I draw my line. I need to move this whole 4x term so the relationship is plus. It would be, if you could see it. Uh, so subtract 4x to get rid of it. Now it's really... Uh, it may be in your head to divide there, but you're moving the whole term and not just getting x by itself. So 2y, negative 4x plus 8. They tend to like the x part first. Math people do. Draw the, uh, I continue to draw my line. Now I need to get rid of times 2 because it's y times 2 because they're touching. So I'm going to divide. I'm going to divide everything by 2. So my new formula is y is equal to, or equation, y is equal to negative 2, because 4 divided by 2 is 2, uh, plus 4, so negative 2x plus 4. All I have to do now is plug in my three values, and I've got my three answers. So my first one, my y is equal to negative 2. I'm going to make a little parentheses here and plug in negative 5. So negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10. So in this case, y is equal to 14. That's the first one. Second one, uh, y is equal to negative 2. My parentheses will have a 2 in it, plus 4. So I do negative 2 times 2. Sorry, the negative kind of hides there, but it is negative. So negative 4 plus 4, and negative 4 plus 4, of course, is 0. So in that case, y is equal to 0. And the last one, y is equal to negative 2 in my parentheses this time, of course, will be 6 plus 4. So what I need to do here is negative 2 times 6 being negative 12. Add 4 there and you get a final answer of y is equal to negative 8. So that's what they want you to do in that question. They want you to solve for y when given all this extra information that you need. Uh, let's do one more. This next one won't be nearly as pretty as the last one if that one was pretty at all. Uh, in this case I'm looking for, I've got my 3x would help if I change that around a little bit. Um, I've got my 3x minus, you know, I, that color's driving me nuts right now, so I'm going to change to this one, which probably won't be any better. 3x minus 5y equals 9. Now, it might help, I don't know, maybe not, uh, to highlight the thing that you're trying to keep. So I'm going to try to keep this y here. So I'm going to highlight it to remind myself to leave it alone. Draw my line. I need to move this plus 3x. Even though it shows a subtraction here, uh, this is positive 3x, so it acts like a negative 5y plus 3x. So I'm going to subtract in case that's messing with your head. Negative 5y minus 3x plus 9. I need to get rid of times negative 5. y is equal to 3 fifths x minus 9 over 5. So from here, I've got my uh, the big equation. I just need to plug in my values. So number 1 would be y is equal to 3 fifths times negative 1 
minus, I don't know why I was doing a plus there. I was thinking ahead, maybe. Nine fifths. Uh, three fifths times negative one, of course, is negative three fifths. And if I take nine fifths away from that, my final value for this one is y is equal to negative 12 over 5. So that's my first one. And that 5 is terribly written. There we go. Uh, number 2, by the it's not much better now, but it was a little better. y is equal to 3 fifths. And in parentheses this time would be the 0 minus 9 fifths. Well, 3 fifths times 0 is, of course, 0. So what I'm left with is negative 9 over 5. And my last one, number 3 y is equal to 3 fifths. This time it's by positive 1, negative 9 fifths. 3 fifths minus 9 fifths. y is equal to negative 6 over 5. So essentially, I'm getting my variable that I'm not given by itself, and then plugging in the values that I am given, finding an answer. Pretty easy stuff, mostly. Um, in other situations, you won't be given values for x. They just want you to solve it. They want you to do the first part, but usually they're a little bit more complicated looking. Now, in this question, uh, these two questions, they want you to solve for x. And I'm going to draw a little line to separate the two. Change color again. Why not? Uh, so the first one wants me to solve for x. And it says y is equal to x minus v over b equals y. Or, or I think I already said the equals y part. So the, the issue is the thing that I want, or mm, the important variable here, would be this x. So I'm going to do everything else that I need to do to get rid of that, uh, to get rid of everything else on that side except for that x. Uh, the whole term on the right side, by the way, is divided by b. See how the x minus v thing is over b? That means divide. So in order to get rid of divide, I need to multiply. So I'm going to multiply by b here and b here. So I'll end up with uh, b y on this side, so by, and on the other side, I am just bring down my x minus v. The orange is a little hard to see, sorry, um, but I've already into it, so I'm not going to change it. I'll do red for the next one. Uh, all I need to do now is just get rid of my minus v, so I'm going to add it. I need to add v to both sides. So my final answer, x over here, because it doesn't matter what side it's on, uh, b y plus v. Or you could do v plus by if you want to do it, or it could be yb, but this is the basic general principle of what they want you to do. On the next one, they want you to get x by itself. The problem is they've gone a little tricky here, put two x's together, or two x's, but they're on different sides of the equation. I'm going to draw the line. I need to get all my x's to one side, so I'm going to move this 4x in order to get rid of, and since it's positive, you treat it like it's a plus. I'm going to subtract 4x from this side, 4x from this side. If you don't see it, it's 1, so 1 minus 4 is negative 3x, minus 3b, divided by negative 3. That's convenient. So x is equal to b. All I had to do was uh, move it around a little bit, identify what I was trying to keep, and everything else just kind of does the dance until I get where I need to be. Uh, the last basic concept that they'll probably throw at you, uh, they tend to like to look at formulas. Uh, it's kind of helpful to be able to do literal, literal equations uh, when you're doing formulas, when you get to the solution part of it. Um, so uh, some basic formulas you might see, perimeter of a rectangle, circumference of a circle, 2 pi r, uh, area of a rectangle length times width, area of a triangle one half base times height. Uh, by the way, peri perimeter of rectangle is two length plus two width. Um, area of a circle is pi r squared. Distance is rate times time. And then uh, temperature Celsius equals five over nine times Fahrenheit minus 32. And that's where the one we're going to use for our final question because I have to use it a lot, a uh, reasonable amount of time anyway. Uh, the question says, what is the temperature in Fahrenheit if the degrees, if the thermometer reads 28 degrees Celsius, well, my wife is Canadian, so I have to do this a lot. I was, you know, I live in America. And we do Fahrenheit and they do Celsius in most of the rest of the world, but you know, we're hard-headed, I guess. And I think in in the UK they tend to use uh, Fahrenheit as well. Anyway, I need to make this conversion a lot because somebody will say it's this hot up here, and I have to think like, what does that mean? So, first thing I'm going to do is write down the formula. I'm going to do purple here. So the formula, like I said before, is the Celsius temperature equals 5 over 9 times the Fahrenheit temperature minus 32. Now, the thing that they give me is degree Celsius. 
but that means that I need to get rid of uh, that I need to get the Fahrenheit by itself. Sorry, need to get rid of nothing. Uh, I will have to get rid of stuff, but it's not that. Here's my Fahrenheit. That's the thing I need to get by itself. I'm going to look at what I can do to the larger group and then get down to that minus 32 part. This whole term in parentheses is multiplied by 5 ninths. In order to get rid of that, I'm going to divide by 5 ninths. And in case you have forgotten fourth grade or fifth grade or whenever you do this, um, if you divide by a fraction, you actually multiply by its uh, flipped over value. So I'm going to do 9 fifths times C, the reciprocal, I should say. That's a little C. I need to do a big C. Because it's Celsius. It actually stands for something as opposed to just some generic letter. Uh, I drop down the Fahrenheit minus 32, which means in order to get the Fahrenheit by itself, I need to add 32. So my new formula with Fahrenheit in a place that I can use it would be 9 fifths times the Celsius temperature plus 32 equals my Fahrenheit temperature. So I'm going to plug in my up here, 9 fifths times 28 plus 32, and that'll get me somewhere in the Fahrenheit universe. Uh, 9 fifths times 28, I'm trying to do it in my head really quickly, which is a really, really stupid way to do this. Um, like 50 and 2 fifths plus 32. 82 and 2 fifths. And most likely you probably won't see it in the uh, um, fraction form, so it's going to say it's about 82.4 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. I don't know why I drew the C there. 82.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's it. Basically, you just take the equation, mark out what you're looking for, move everything around, plug in your values, and solve. Literal equations are not that complicated, and I mean that literally.